Welcome to the definitive CDH compilation of Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. Yuriko capitalizes on its ability to gradually wear down opponents while preserving card advantage through its enablers of low-cost creatures and ninjas. This deck seamlessly transitions between playing aggressively, executing combos, and adopting a control strategy. It then closes out the game by either draining opponents, Thoracle plus Consult, Nashi plus Enter the Infinite, or Sakashima Student and an opponent's Dockside. Yuriko's resilience is notably enhanced by her Commander Ninjutsu, which allows her to bypass Commander Tax. Rush draws and plays a Taiga. He casts a Noble Hierarch. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts Elves of Deep Shadow and gives the turn to Chad. Chad draws and plays a Mountain. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He follows it up with a Chrome Mox, imprinting Valakut Awakening. He cracks his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his Commander, Sir Kara the Bold. He casts Mox Amber. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. With a blazing fast start and next to no cards in hand, Chad chips the turn. Adam draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts 4th Bridge Prowler. It enters and targets Noah's Elves of Deep Shadow, killing it. Adam passes. Russ draws and plays a Bayou. He casts Mystic Remora. He follows it up with a Soul Ring. All finished up, he gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts Demonic Tutor. Remora triggers and Russ draws. Demonic Tutor resolves and Noah fetches up a card into his hand. Noah passes. Chad draws and activates his commander, pinging Noah for one. Sir Kara triggers and Chad exiles a command beacon from the top of his library. He follows it up with a Jessica's Will, targeting Adam. Dragon's Rage Channeler and Remora trigger. Russ draws and Chad surveils a snow-covered mountain into his graveyard. Then Jessica's Will resolves. Chad adds six red and then exiles Ignite Memories, Snow-Covered Mountain, and a mountain. He plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts Ignite Memories with a storm count of two, targeting Adam and Noah. Channeler and Remora trigger. Russ draws from Remora and Chad surveils, leaving it on top. Then Ignite resolves. Noah reveals a card at random, which is a Mana Crypt. Then Adam reveals a card at random, which is an Island. He moves to combat and attacks Russ with Chandler. Chad passes the turn. Adam draws and plays a Dark Slick Shores. He attacks Russ with 4th Bridge Prowler. Russ declares no blocks and before damage, Adam activates his Commander's Ninjutsu ability, returning 4th Bridge Prowler to his hand and putting Yuriko onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Russ takes it and Yuriko triggers. Adam reveals a Loom Duel's Vault and each opponent loses two. Adam passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Russ pays for his Remora. He draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main phase and adds a green through Carpet. He pays three and puts Gigantha the Wellspring into his hand. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Zombie Infestation. All finished up, he gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Phyrexian Tower. He casts a Mana Crypt. Remora triggers and Russ draws. He casts his commander, the Gitrog Monster. He ships the turn to Chad. During his upkeep, Chad activates Sir Kara, pinging Rust for one. Sir Kara triggers and Chad exiles Gutshot. Chad draws for turn and pays two life to help cast Gutshot, targeting Noah. Remora and Chandler trigger. Rust draws and Chad surveils one, keeping it on top. Then Gutshot deals one damage to Noah and Sir Kara triggers. Chad exiles Flame Rift and then immediately casts it. Chandler and Remora trigger. Rust draws and then Chad surveils Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, into his graveyard. Flame Rift then deals 4 damage to everyone. Sir Kara triggers and Chad exiles Mana Vault, Gemstone Caverns, Treasure Naver, and Volcanic Spray. He plays the Gemstone Caverns. He casts Mana Vault, Chandler and Remora trigger. Rust draws and Chad surveils Leyline of Punishment into his graveyard. He casts Treasure Naver. He casts Volcanic Spray. Chandler and Remora trigger again. Rust draws and then Chad surveils, leaving it on top. Volcanic Spray then deals 1 damage to all players and creatures without flying, killing Noble Hierarch. Sir Kara triggers and Chad exiles Pyroblast, Wheel of Misfortune, and two Snow-Covered Mountains. He moves to combat and attacks Russ with Dragon's Rage Chandler, which now has Delirium. Russ takes it and Chad gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws and casts 4th Bridge Prowler. It enters and targets Chad's Treasure Naver. Adam moves to combat and attacks Chad with Yuriko. Chad takes it and Yuriko triggers. Adam reveals Commandeer and each opponent loses 7. In a second main phase, Adam plays an island. He passes. At the end of Adam's turn, Rust activates Zombie Infestation, discarding Gigantha the Wellspring and Treasonous Ogre, creating a 2-2 zombie. The turn moves to Rust. During his upkeep, Rust pays for his Remora. He draws and in his first main phase, he adds two black through his Carpet of Flowers. He plays a Forbidden Orchard for turn. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Noah a 1-1 Spirit to help cast Reanimate, targeting Gigantha the Wellspring. In response, Adam casts Commandeer for its alternate cost, exiling Force of Will and Blink Moth Infusion, targeting Reanimate. Remora triggers and Rust draws. Commandeer resolves and Adam reanimates Gigantha, losing 5 life. 
Russ activates Witchclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and passing Witchclaw to Noah. He discards Elvish Mystic and Gemstone Caverns to Zombie Infestation, creating a 2-2 zombie. He passes. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. Get Rock Triggers, he floats a green and then sacrifices Snow Covered Forest. Get Rock Triggers again and he draws. Still in his upkeep, he activates Witchclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and passing Witchclaw to Adam. Noah draws for turn and then sacrifices a spirit to Phyrexian Tower for two black. He casts Oblivion Crown, targeting Gitrog. Treasure Nabber and Remora Trigger. Rust draws and then Chad gains control of Noah's Mana Crypt. Oblivion Crown resolves and Noah activates it, discarding Dakmore Salvage. Gitrog triggers and Noah dredges two to return Dakmore back to his hand. Using this loop, he can continually dredge lands and shuffle Titans into his graveyard, stacking more and more draw triggers onto the stack. He continues this process until he mules Ulamog the Infinite Gyre. It triggers and with the shuffle trigger on the stack, Adam responds by casting Tainted Pact. Remora triggers and Rust draws. Knowing this could stop his combo, Noah responds by discarding Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Kozilek triggers and Noah shuffles his graveyard into his library. Noah repeats the Dakmore loop on top of Tainted Pact, stacking up enough triggers to draw his library. With his library in his hand, he discards 7 non-land cards to gain Threshold. He casts Cabal Ritual, now with Threshold, adding 5 black. He casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Phyrexian Tower. He holds priority, discarding Emergent Zone, Kozilek, and a large pile of non-land cards. Noah then shuffles his graveyard into his library. Remora triggers and Rush draws. Gitrog triggers and Noah draws. Crop Rotation resolves and then Noah fetches up an Emergent Zone onto the battlefield. He cracks his Emergent Zone, giving his spells Flash until end of turn. Gitrog triggers and Noah draws. He flashes in a Deathrite Shaman. He flashes in Mox Diamond, discarding Bazaar of Baghdad. Gitrog and Remora trigger. Rust draws, and Noah responds to the Gitrog trigger by discarding Ulamog, shuffling his graveyard back into his library. He then draws through Gitrog. Noah flashes in a Mana Vault, and Rust draws through Remora. He flashes in a Soul Ring. Remora and Treasure Nabber trigger. Chad steals Noah's Mana Vault, and Rust draws. Noah then flashes in Chrome Mox, imprinting Wild Growth, and Rust draws through Remora. Noah flashes in Finehorn Elves. Noah casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Mystic Remora. Remora and Treasure Naver trigger. Naver steals Mox Diamond and Rust draws. Remora is destroyed and then Noah flashes in a Lotus Petal. He discards 7 non-land cards and helps cast Cabal Ritual with Threshold, adding 5 black. He cracks his petal and casts Crop Rotation, holding priority and discarding Gaia's Cradle. Gitrog triggers and Noah shuffles in his graveyard with Ulamog before he draws. Crop Rotation resolves and Noah tutors out, well, a, a Gaia's Cradle. <laughs> he then taps his Cradle for 3 green. He presents a loop of tutoring out Gaia's Cradle with Crop Rotation and then tapping it for infinite green mana. Noah casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Deathrite Shaman as an additional cost. He flashes in a Finale of Devastation where X equals 10,000, fetching up Deathrite Shaman onto the battlefield with haste. He activates Deathrite, exiling an instant from Adam's graveyard and each of his opponents lose 2 life. He presents a loop of sacrificing Deathrite, tutoring it back out with Finale of Devastation where X is greater than 10, and then activating Deathrite for every instant and sorcery in his opponent's graveyard. Once out of instants and sorceries in his opponent's graveyards, he discards instants and sorceries into his own graveyard to feed Deathrite. He does this over and over until the table is dead and Noah wins the game. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today.
If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Cole draws and plays a swamp. He casts Tormented Soul. He follows it up with an Ornithopter. He passes. Jay draws and plays a Gemstone Mine. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He passes. Noah draws and plays a Training Center. He casts a Turn 1, Mystic Remora. Noah gives the turn to Ian. Ian draws and plays a Brushland. He taps it to help cast Esper Sentinel. He passes. Cole draws and plays an Island. He immediately moves to combat and attacks Ian with Ornithopter. Ian declares no blocks and, in response, Cole ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Ornithopter to his hand. Ian takes it and Yuriko triggers. Cole reveals a Bolus' Citadel and each opponent loses six. In his second main phase, he recasts Ornithopter. He passes. Jay draws and in his first main phase, he adds one green through his carpet of flowers. He plays a Volcanic Island. He casts his commander, Animar, Soul of Elements. Jay ships the turn to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah lets his Remora die. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Ristic Study. Esper triggers and Ian draws. Ristic resolves and, having upgraded from a Mystic Remora, Noah passes. Ian draws and plays a Bountiful Promenade. He casts Thorn of Amethyst. Ristic triggers and Noah draws. Noah groans and Thorn resolves. With nothing else, Ian passes. Cole draws and plays an Island. He casts Thassa, God of the Sea. Ristic triggers and Noah draws. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Yuriko and Tormented Soul. Noah takes it and Yuriko triggers. Cole reveals a Dakuchi Silencer and each opponent loses two. Cole gives the turn to Jay. Jay draws and in his first main phase he adds two green through his carpet. He plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts Painter's Servant, Animar, and Ristic Trigger. Noah draws and Animar gets a plus one plus one counter. Painter's Servant resolves and Jay names Black, giving Animar protection from essentially everything. Next, he casts Mystic Remora. Esper and Ristic Trigger, and both players draw. Satisfied with his turn, Jay passes. Noah draws and plays a command tower. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Noah creates seven treasures. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He follows it up with his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krark. He casts Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist, and then Noah creates seven more treasures. He casts Imperial Recruiter. It enters and Noah fetches up a Harmonic Prodigy into his hand. He casts Frantic Search. Krark, Sakashima, Esper Sentinel, and Mr. Kimura all trigger. Ian and Jay draw, and then Noah flips two coins. Noah loses both flips and unfortunately really needed at least one of those flips to go off. Sadly, he returns the spell to his hand and passes. Ian draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He takes no other actions and passes, discarding to hand size, including a Savine's Reclamation. During his upkeep, Thassa, God of the Sea, triggers and Cole scries one. He draws and plays an Underground River. He activates Thassa, making Yuriko unblockable until the end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Yuriko and Tormented Soul. Noah declares no blocks and, in response, Cole Ninjutsu's in Dakuchi Silencer, bouncing Tormented Soul to his hand. Noah takes it, Yuriko triggers twice, and Dakuchi Silencer triggers once. He discards Tormented Soul to Dakuchi, destroying Noah's Dockside. Then Yuriko's triggers resolve, and Cole reveals a Slither Blade with each opponent losing two, and then he reveals a Temporal Manipulation with each opponent losing five. All finished up, Cole passes. During his upkeep, Jay lets his Remora die. He draws, and in his first main phase, he adds two green through his carpet. He plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a taiga onto the battlefield. He casts Arbor Elf, Animar and Ristic Trigger. Noah draws, and Animar gets a counter. He casts Sylvan Library, Esper and Ristic Trigger. He pays for Ristic, and Ian draws off of Esper. Jay passes. At the end of Jay's turn, Ian casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Krark. Ristic Triggers, and Noah draws. Abrupt Decay resolves, and Krark is destroyed. Then the turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Harmonic Prodigy. He casts Frantic Search. His copy of Krark triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy, and Ian draws off of Esper. Noah flips one heads and one tails. He copies Frantic Search, drawing two, discarding two, and untapping three lands. Then Frantic Search is bounced to his hand. He taps his Ancient Tomb and pays two life to help cast Phyrexian Metamorph. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist, creating seven treasures. He casts Solve the Equation. Krark triggers twice. He wins both flips, copying the spell twice. He fetches up a Brightstone Ritual, fetches up a Jessica's Will, and then finally fetches up a Heat Shimmer into his hand. He casts Brightstone Ritual. Krark triggers twice, and in response to both, Jay removes the final counter from Gemstone Mine and pays two life to help cast Mental Misstep, targeting Brightstone Ritual. Both Esper and Ristic trigger, and both players draw. Then, the original Brightstone is countered. Noah flips twice, winning one and losing one. He adds three red. The original spell would be bounced to hand, but it got countered. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Ian. 
Kruk triggers twice, and Noah wins both flips. He copies Jessica's will two times. He adds a total of 27 red, and then exiles Tavern Scoundrel, Arcane Signet, Tybalt's Trickery, Soul Ring, Mind's Dilation, and Four Lands. He recasts his commander, Kruk the Thumbless. He casts Tavern Scoundrel from Exile. He casts Heat Shimmer, targeting Imperial Recruiter. Kruk and Shakashima trigger a total of four times. Noah wins two flips and loses two flips. He creates two copies of Heat Shimmer and bounces the original to his hand. He targets and copies Imperial Recruiter both times. He fetches up a Spell Seeker into his hand and then fetches up a Storm Kiln Artist into his hand. Tavern Scoundrel triggers twice and creates four treasures. Noah casts Spell Seeker. It enters and triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. He fetches up a Grape Shot and then fetches up a Pact of Negation all into his hand. He presents a loop of casting Grape Shot with all copies targeting his opponents. Storm Kiln Artist triggers each time, creating a treasure for every Storm copy. Kark and Sakashima trigger four times per cast, and yes, he really did roll for these on camera. Every time he loses, Grape Shot bounces back to his hand and he recasts this. He does this repeatedly, netting mana, dealing damage to his opponents, and increasing the Storm count until his opponents are dead, and Noah wins the game. Sean has the worst spelling of the name Sean, so everyone felt sorry for him and let him go first. Sean draws a card for turn and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Wild Growth, targeting his Tropical Island. He passes. Taylor draws a card for turn and plays a Spectator Seating. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Lightning Greaves. He follows it up with a Rograk, son of Rogah. He equips Rograk with Lightning Greaves. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Rograk, sending a message. The table laughs and Ben takes zero. The turn moves to Ben. Ben draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He passes. Mike draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Moth Dust Changeling. He gives the turn to Sean. Sean draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He follows it up with a Sylvan Library. He passes. Taylor draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Human as it enters. He casts his commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. He moves to combat and, in response, Sean taps his Tarnished Citadel to help cast Swords to Plowshares, targeting Winota. Winota is exiled and Taylor gains four life. Dismayed and with his plan foiled, Taylor passes the turn. Ben draws, and in his first main phase, he adds a green through his carpet of flowers. He plays a command tower. He casts Argothian Enchantress and ends the turn. Mike draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Moth Dust Changeling. Sean declares no blocks, and in response, Mike Ninjitsu's in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Moth Dust Changeling to his hand. Sean takes it, and Yuriko triggers. Mike reveals an Ornithopter into his hand. In his second main phase, he casts Ornithopter. All finished up, Mike passes. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He follows it up with Atlanta War Elves. He ships the turn. Taylor draws and plays a Plains. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Draneth Magistrate. He recasts his commander, Winota, Joiner of Forces. He moves to combat, and in response, Ben casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Winota. Winota is exiled, and Taylor gains four life. Taylor questions whether he's in some sort of time loop, and the table assures him that he's not. He passes. Ben draws, and in his first main phase, he adds a green through his carpet of flowers. He casts his commander, Sithis, Harvest Tan. Argothian Enchantress triggers, and he draws. He plays a Bountiful Promenade as his land for turn. He follows it up with a Root Maze. Argothian triggers, and he draws. It enters, and Sithis triggers. Ben draws and gains a life. Sitting in a strong position, Ben passes. Mike draws and casts Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He moves to combat and attacks Taylor with Yuriko. Taylor takes it, and Yuriko triggers. Mike reveals a Seagate Restoration, and each opponent loses seven. In his second main phase, he plays Seagate Reborn into play tapped. He casts Fairy Seer. It enters, and he scries two. He passes. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through his Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. He plays a Forbidden Orchard, entering tap through Root Maze. He taps his Tarnished Citadel to cast his other commander, Bruce Tarl, or Herder. It enters, and Sean gives Thrasios double strike and lifelink until the end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Taylor with Thrasios. Taylor takes it, and Sean gains two life. The turn moves to Taylor. Taylor draws and plays a Plains, entering tap through Root Maze. He casts Zealous Conscripts. It enters, and Taylor gains control of Mike's Yuriko, untapping it. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Yuriko. Ben blocks with Sithis. Taylor passes. At the end of Taylor's turn, Mike regains control of Yuriko. Ben draws, and in his first main phase, he has a white through his carpet. He casts Seal of Primordium, Argothian Enchantress, and Sithis trigger. Ben draws two and gains one life. He casts Utopia Sprawl, targeting his forest. Argothian and Sithis trigger again, and Ben draws two and gains a life again. Utopia Sprawl enters, and Ben names White. He casts Miri's Guile. Argothian and Sithis trigger, Ben draws two and gains a life. With a million cards in hand, Ben passes, discarding to hand size. Mike draws and decides it's time to deal with the problem at the table. 
He pays four life to help cast Dismember, killing Sithis. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Fairy Seer, Ornithopter, and Yuriko. Ben declares no blocks, and Mike Ninjutsu's in Skull Snatcher, returning Ornithopter to his hand. Ben takes it, Yuriko triggers twice, and Skull Snatcher triggers. Mike exiles Swords to Plowshares and Arid Mesa from Ben's graveyard. Then Yuriko's triggers resolve, Mike reveals Tetsuko Umizawa Fugitive into his hand, with each opponent losing two, and Dark Slick Shores into his hand. In the second main phase, he casts Ornithopter. He plays a tap Dark Slick Shores. He passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Sean casts Worldly Tutor. He fetches up a Seaborn Muse onto the top of his library. Still in the end step, Ben sacrifices Seal of Primordium, destroying Sean's wild growth. The turn moves to Sean. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Bruce Tarl. Bruce triggers and targets itself. Mike takes it, and Sean gains six life. In his second main phase, Sean casts Dranith Magistrate. He gives the turn to Taylor. Taylor draws and plays a snow-covered mountain into play tapped. He casts Phyrexian Revoker. In response, Sean casts Spell Snare, countering Revoker. Taylor moves to combat and attacks Sean with Zealous Conscripts. Sean takes it, and Taylor passes the turn. During his upkeep, Miri's Guile triggers. Ben looks at and rearranges the top three cards of his library. He draws, and in his first main phase, he adds a white through his carpet. He plays a Horizon Canopy, tapped. He casts Idyllic Tutor. He fetches up a Sanctum Weaver into his hand. He casts Sanctum Weaver. He passes. Mike draws and casts Tetsuko Umizawa, Fugitive. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Fairy Seer, Skull Snatcher, and Yuriko. Ben takes it, Yuriko triggers twice, and Skull Snatcher triggers. Mike exiles Seal of Primordium and Idyllic Tutor from Ben's graveyard. Then Yuriko's trigger resolves, Mike reveals Crippling Fear into his hand with each opponent losing four, and a Misty Rainforest into his hand. In his second main phase, he plays an Underground River into play tapped. He casts Moth Dust Changeling. He follows it up with a Mem Knight. It enters tapped, and Mike ships the turn. During his draw step, Sean draws two extra through his Sylvan Library and puts two back on top. He immediately moves to combat and attacks Ben with Bruce Tarl. Bruce triggers and targets itself. Ben takes it, and Sean gains six life. In a second main phase, he taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Ben a 1-1 spirit to help cast Seedborn Muse. One by one, the table pass priority and Seedborn resolves. Sitting in a very strong position, Sean passes. Sean untaps with Taylor through Seedborn. Taylor draws and casts Captain of the Watch. It enters, and Taylor creates three 1-1 soldiers. He equips his Captain of the Watch with Lightning Greaves. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Captain of the Watch and Zealous Conscripts. Zen blocks Zealous with his 1-1 spirit. Ben takes the rest, and then Taylor passes. At the end of Taylor's turn, Sean activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Green Sun Zenith into his hand. The turn moves to Ben. Sean untaps with Ben through Seedborn. During his upkeep, Ben's Miri's Guile triggers. In response, Sean channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Sanctum Weaver. In response, Ben flows five green through Sanctum Weaver. Weaver is destroyed, and Ben fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield tapped. Then Miri's Guile's trigger resolves, and he looks at and rearranges the top three. He draws, and in his first main phase, he adds a white through his carpet. He casts On Thin Ice, enchanting his snow-covered forest. Argothian Enchantress triggers, and Ben draws. On Thin Ice resolves, and exiles Seedborn Muse. He follows up with a Green Sun Zenith, where X equals 2. In response, Sean taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Ben a 1-1 Spirit to help activate Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Breeding Pool onto the battlefield tapped. Then Green Suns resolves, and Ben fetches up a Destiny Spinner onto the battlefield, shuffling Green Suns back into his library. He plays a Razor Verge Thicket into play tapped. He casts Llanowar Elves. Ben gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws, and in his first main phase, he taps his Ornithopter to give Moth Dust Changeling flying until end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Ben with Moth Dust Changeling, Yuriko, Fairy Seer, Tetsuko, Skull Snatcher, and Mem Knight. Ben takes it, and Yuriko triggers three times. Mike reveals a Marsh Flats into his hand, Ninja of the Deep Hours into his hand with each opponent losing four, and Prosperous Thief into his hand with each opponent losing three. Ben dies, and Seedborn Muse returns to the battlefield under Sean's control. In his second main phase, Mike plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a swamp onto the battlefield. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Gemstone Caverns. He cast Crippling Fear, choosing ninjas. The non-ninjas on the board are all nuked, and then Mike follows it up with a Cursed Totem. Now sitting in a very commanding board position, Mike ships the turn. Sean draws and casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Green Sun Zenith. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Mike a spirit to help cast his commander, Bruce Tarl, Boris Herder. It enters, and Sean gives Seedborn Double Strike and Lifelink until the end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Seedborn. Mike blocks with his spirit and Sean gains two life. All finished up, Sean passes. Taylor draws and recasts his commander, Winota, joiner of forces. He casts Ornithopter. He equips Ornithopter with Lightning Greaves. He moves to combat and, in response, Mike casts Chain of Vapor, bouncing Winota. Taylor sacrifices the planes to continue the chain, bouncing Seedborn Muse. Sean decides to stop the chain there. Taylor, really hoping next game that he can get a Winota trigger, passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He casts Prosperous Thief. 
He moves to combat and attacks Taylor with Moth Dust Changeling, Yuriko, and Skull Snatcher. Taylor blocks Moth Dust Changeling with Ornithopter and takes the rest. Yuriko triggers twice along with Skull Snatcher and Prosperous Thief. Mike creates a treasure and exiles two cards from Taylor's graveyard. Yuriko's triggers resolve and Mike reveals a watery grave into his hand and a demonic tutor into his hand with each opponent losing two. In his second main phase, Mike casts Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and then immediately delves away some of his graveyard to cast Temporal Trespass. It resolves and Mike gets an extra turn. He passes to, well, himself. Mike draws and immediately moves to combat, attacking Taylor with Moth Dust Changeling, Yuriko, Prosperous Thief, and Skull Snatcher. Taylor blocks Moth Dust Changeling with Ornithopter and takes the rest. Yuriko triggers three times along with one Skull Snatcher and Prosperous Thief trigger. Mike creates a treasure and exiles two cards from Taylor's graveyard. Then Yuriko's triggers resolve and Mike reveals a Mystical Tutor into his hand with each opponent losing one. With his other Yuriko triggers still on the stack, he casts Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Dig Through Time onto the top of his library. He reveals a Dig Through Time through Yuriko and each opponent loses eight. Sean dies and with his final Yuriko trigger on the stack, Mike delves away some of his graveyard to help cast Dig Through Time. He looks at the top seven cards of his library, puts two into his hand and the rest on bottom. Then Yuriko's final trigger resolves and he reveals a Swan Song into his hand with each opponent losing one. In his second main phase, Mike casts Ninja of the Deep Hours. He plays a Watery Grave into play tapped. He passes to Taylor. During Taylor's upkeep, Mike invokes Magic Tournament Rule 3.13, revealing his hand full of counter magic, asking if Taylor would like to concede the game. Taylor, unfazed, decides to keep fighting. He draws and recasts his commander, Winota, joiner of forces. He casts Avon Mind Sensor. In response, Mike casts Force of Will, paying a life and exiling a blue card, countering Avon. Taylor equips his Winota with Lightning Greaves. He attacks Mike with Winota and Ornithopter, and finally, after a grueling game, gets a Winota trigger. The audience cheers, and Taylor looks at the top six cards of his library, putting Mentor of the Meek into play tapped and attacking Mike. Mike declares no blocks and takes it all. Satisfied with his single Winota trigger, Taylor sees the writing on the wall, concedes, and Mike wins the game. Ashani wins the Bomberman Challenge and gets to start us off. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays an Urza Saga, getting its first counter. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Felwar Stone. He passes. Nick draws a card for turn and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts a Mem Knight. He casts a Changeling Outcast. Nick passes. Mike draws and plays a Steam Vents into play Untapped, paying two life. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Mox Opal. Finished up, Mike ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus to help cast his commander, Croc the Thumbless. He taps his Shivan Reef to help cast Gamble. Croc triggers, he wins the flip, copying Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Mind's Desire. He then fetches up another card into his hand and then randomly discards a Tavern Scoundrel. He casts a Mana Crypt, he casts a Soul Ring. All through, Noah gives the turn to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Sea of Clouds for turn. He casts his commander, Shorkai, Genesis Engine. In response, Mike casts Cabal Ritual, adding three black. He casts Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam resolves, and Mike reveals a Crop Rotation, Fluster Storm, Windfall, Marsh Flats, Spell Pierce, Necropotence, Chrome Mox, Arcane Signet, Bluntstain Mire, Fierce Guardianship, Breeding Pool, Volcanic Island, Felwar Stone, Birds of Paradise, Pyroblast, Dockside Extortionist, Final Fortune, Jeweled Lotus, Ledger Shredder, and a chain of vapor, deciding to stop there. Then Shorkai resolves. The table worries as Ashani passes the turn. Nick draws and plays the Sunken Ruins. The table asks him to hold up interaction for Mike and he moves to combat. Nick attacks Mike with Mem Knight and Changeling Outcast. Mike declares no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Mem Knight to his hand. Then Mike takes it and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Thieves Guild Enforcer into his hand with each opponent losing one and a Demonic Tutor into his hand with each opponent losing two. In his second main phase, Nick recasts Mem Knight. He gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Birds of Paradise. He plays a Volcanic Island for turn. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Mike creates seven treasures. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts a Tender Wall. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Necropotence. He casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing Volcanic Island as an additional cost. He fetches up an Emergent Zone onto the battlefield. He activates Necropotence six times, paying six life and exiling six cards. He casts Chain of Vapor, bouncing Dockside to his hand. He sacks a land, copies the chain, and bounces Necropotence back to his hand. Mike moves to his end step and puts the Necro cards into his hand. Still in his end step, he cracks his Emergence Zone, giving his spells flash until end of turn. He flashes in a Dockside Extortionist, creating seven treasures. He flashes in a Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Necropotence. He flashes in Underworld Breach. He escapes Gamble from his graveyard. 
He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Windswept Heath. He casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. He escapes Brain Freeze from his graveyard with all copies targeting himself again. He does this until he mills Lion's Eye Diamond. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks it, discarding his hand, adding 3 blue. He escapes Brain Freeze and Lion's Eye Diamond over and over again until he mills his entire library. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, triggers, and Mike wins the game. Noah draws and plays a River Glide Pathway. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Desperate Ritual. He casts a Mana Ball. He casts his commander, Krok the Thumbless. He casts his other commander, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Krok. With both commanders already on the battlefield, Noah passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying two life. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Wooded Foothills. He casts Sensei's Divining Top. Mike ends his turn. Nick draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Phyrexian Walker and gives the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a City of Traitors. He casts Azorius Signet. He passes. At the end of Ashani's turn, Nick pays 4 life to help cast Dismember, killing Noah's Sakashima. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he casts a Ruby Medallion. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Krark. Mike takes it, and in his second main phase, Noah plays a Mountain. Noah gives the turn to Mike. At the end of Noah's turn, Mike activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. Mike draws and plays a Bayou. He casts Dark Ritual. In response, Ashani pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Dark Rituals. Mike sits back surprised as he's never seen his Dark Ritual countered before. A deflated Mike passes to Nick. Nick draws and plays an Underground River. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Phyrexian Walker. Mike declares no blocks and, in response, Nick taps his Underground River to ninjutsu in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Phyrexian Walker back to his hand. Mike takes it and Yuriko triggers. Nick reveals a March of Swirling Mist into his hand with each opponent losing one. In his second main phase, Nick recasts Phyrexian Walker. He passes to Ashani. Ashani draws and floats two colorless through City of Traitors. He plays a Polluted Delta, sacrificing City of Traitors. He cracks his Polluted Delta, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Shorkai, Genesis Engine. Ashani ends his turn. At the end of Ashani's turn, Noah casts Geist Wave, targeting Mana Ball. Krark triggers, he loses the flip, bouncing Geist Wave back to his hand. Still in his end step, Nick casts Deadly Rollick for its alternate cost, exiling Krark. Noah sighs and moves to his turn. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Ball. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He recasts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts Harmonic Prodigy. He taps his Ancient Doom to help cast Geist Wave, targeting Mana Ball. Krark triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. Noah wins the flip, copying Geist Wave, bouncing Mana Crypt back to his hand and drawing a card. He wins his flip again, copying Geist Wave, bouncing Chrome Mox back to his hand and drawing a card. Then the original resolves, bouncing Mana Ball, and Noah draws again. Noah recasts Mana Crypt. He recasts Chrome Mox and printing Evoke Calamity. He recasts Mana Ball. All finished up, Noah passes to Mike. At the end of Noah's turn, Mike spends his top. Mike draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He activates top, drawing a card and putting top on top. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Ad Nauseum, which feels extra bad. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Mike creates seven treasures. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Krom. Noah takes it and Mike gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Yuriko and Phyrexian Walker. Ashani declares no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsus in Silver Fur Master, bouncing Phyrexian Walker back to his hand. Ashani takes it and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Sunken Ruins into his hand and then reveals a Universal Automaton into his hand with each opponent losing one. In his second main phase, he recasts Phyrexian Walker. Nick ships the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays an island. He casts Imposter Mech. It enters as a copy of Dockside Extortionist, creating eight treasures. He casts Counterbalance. Chrome triggers and Mike draws. In response, Mike casts Fierce Guardian Chip for its alternate cost. In response, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Then Fierce counters Counterbalance. Next, Ashani casts a Soul Ring. He follows it up with a Tezzeret the Seeker. He activates Tezzeret's second ability, fetching up an unwinding clock onto the battlefield. With his engine, see what it did there? Now set up, Ashani passes. Ashani untaps his artifacts with Noah. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Solve the Equation. Krark triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. Noah loses his first flip, bouncing Solve the Equation back to his hand. He wins his second flip, copying Solve the Equation. He fetches up a Strike It Rich into his hand. He casts Strike It Rich. 
Cork triggers twice, and Chrom triggers. Mike draws, then Noah wins his flip, copying Strike at Rich, creating a treasure. He loses his second flip, bouncing Strike at Rich back to his hand. He casts Solve the Equation. Cork triggers twice. Noah wins his flip, copying Solve the Equation. With the copy on the stack, Nick casts March of Swirling Mist, exiling a blue card, phasing out both Harmonic Prodigy and Krark. Then Solve the Equation resolves, and Noah fetches up a Flusterstorm into his hand. He then wins his next flip, copying Solve, fetching up a Mystical Tutor into his hand. Then the original copy resolves, and he fetches up Mog Salvage into his hand. Noah plays an Island for turn. He casts Talisman of Creativity. Noah passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Still in the end step, Noah casts Mog Salvage for its alternate cost, targeting Unwinding Clock. In response, Ashani casts Chain of Vapor, bouncing Unwinding Clock back to his hand. The turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Ikra Shidiki, the Usurper. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Krom and Noah with Dockside. Both take it and Mike gains 6 life. All through, Mike passes. Nick draws and plays a Cephalid Colosseum. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Yuriko and Silver Fur Master. Noah takes it and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Memnite into his hand and then reveals a Thassus Oracle into his hand with each opponent losing 2. In his second main phase, Nick casts Moth Dust Changeling. Nick ends his turn. Ashani draws and recasts Unwinding Clock. He activates Shorakai. In response, Noah casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Jessica's Will onto the top of his library. Then Shorakai's ability resolves, and Ashani draws two, discards one, and creates a pilot. He crews Imposter Mech and moves to combat. He attacks Noah with Imposter Mech. Noah takes it, and Ashani passes the turn. Before he untaps, Noah's creatures phase in. Ashani untaps his artifacts with Noah. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Still in his upkeep, Ashani casts Pongify, targeting Krark. Krark is destroyed, and Noah creates a 3-3-8. During his draw step, Noah takes a damage from his Mana Vault. Finally in his main phase, he taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast its commander, Krark the Thumbless. In response, Ashani flashes in a Dress Down. Krom triggers, and Mike draws. Dress Down resolves, and Ashani draws. Then Krark resolves. Noah casts Jessica's Will, adding 5 red and exiling Overmaster, Dualcaster Mage, and Swan Song. He casts Overmaster from Exile. It resolves, and Noah draws. He casts Dualcaster Mage. He passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani activates Shorkai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Then Dress Down is sacrificed. Ashani untaps his artifacts with Mike through Unwinding Clock. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ashani with Krom. Ashani takes it, and in his second main phase, Mike casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Ashani activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Nick draws and plays the Sunken Ruins. He moves to combat, attacking Mike with Yuriko, Silver Fur, and Moth Dust Changeling. Mike takes it, and Yuriko triggers three times. Nick reveals a fourth bridge Prowler into his hand with each opponent losing one. He reveals a Dispel into his hand with each opponent losing one, and he reveals a Verdant Catacombs into his hand. Finished up, Nick ends his turn. At the end of Nick's turn, Ashani activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Then Nick discards the hand size, and the turn moves to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays an island. He activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. He casts Draneth Magistrate. Ashani passes. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. During his draw step, he takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Noah creates nine treasures. With nothing else, Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Mike draws and moves to combat. He attacks Ashani with Krom and Nick with Ikra. They both take it, and Mike gains 11 life. Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Ashani activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Nick draws and casts a Soul Ring. He casts Memnite. Krom triggers, and Mike draws. He casts Universal Automaton. He activates Moth Dust Changeling, tapping Memnite, giving it flying until end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Yuriko, Silver Fur, Phyrexian Walker, and Noah with Moth Dust Changeling. Before damage, Noah casts Pyroblast, targeting Moth Dust. Krark triggers twice through Harmonic Prodigy. He wins his first flip, copying Pyroblast, targeting Yuriko. Yuriko is destroyed. Noah wins his second flip, targeting his own Dockside. It resolves, but doesn't destroy Dockside because it's not blue. Then in response to the original Pyroblast, Nick ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko, bouncing Moth Dust to his hand. Then they both take it, Noah dies, and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Lotus Petal into his hand, and then reveals a Morphic Pool into his hand. In his second main phase, he plays a Morphic Pool for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. Finished up, Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Ashani activates Shorakai, drawing two, discarding one, and creating a pilot. Still in the end step, Ashani channels Ottawara, Soaring City, bouncing Imposter Mech to his hand. The turn moves to Ashani. Ashani draws and casts Imposter Mech. In response, Mike casts an offer you can't refuse. In response, Ashani casts Dispel. 
Chrome triggers, and Mike draws. In response, Nick casts his own Dispel, targeting Ashani's Dispel. With nothing else, Dispel counters Dispel and Offer counters Imposter Mech, and then Ashani creates two treasures. Next, Ashani casts Silence. In response, Mike casts Spell Pierce, countering Silence. Next, Ashani casts Isochron Scepter. In response, Mike casts Veil of Summer, looking for an answer. Veil resolves and Mike draws. Mike tells him that he did not find what he needs and he needs Nick's help. So in response, Nick cracks his Cephalid Coliseum, targeting Mike. Mike draws three and discards three. Unfortunately, he still cannot find an answer and Isochron Scepter resolves. It enters and Ashani imprints Dramatic Reversal. He activates Isochron, repeatedly casting Dramatic Reversal and untapping his non-land permanence. He generates infinite mana and then begins activating Shorkai, drawing and discarding. He draws until he finds and casts Blind Obedience. He now uses Isochron Scepter to cast Dramatic Reversal over and over again, this time extorting it through Blind Obedience. He does this over and over and drains the table, and Ashani wins the game. Zack was declared the smartest guy in the room and gets to start us off. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He ships the turn. Dan draws a card for turn and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast Soul Ring. Esper Sentinel triggers and Zack draws. He follows it up with a Talisman of Progress. He casts Grim Monolith. With three rocks and his mana all set up, he passes. Nate draws and plays a Clearwater Pathway. He casts Fairy Seer, scrying two as it enters. He gives the turn to Paul. Paul draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. Esper Sentinel triggers and Zack draws. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mana Vault. He cracks his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two Thralls. He pays two and foretells a card face down from his hand into exile. Paul passes. Zack draws and plays Volcanic Island. He moves to combat and attacks Tevish with Esper Sentinel. Paul blocks with a Thrall. In his second main phase, Zack casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He ends the turn. Dan draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He taps his Talisman to help cast his commander, Ishai, Ujitai Dragon Speaker. He passes. Nate draws and casts a Mana Crypt. Ishai and Esper Sentinel trigger. Zack draws and Ishai gets a counter. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Fairy Seer. Zack declares no blocks and, in response, Nate ninjutsu in Mist Syndicate Naga, bouncing Fairy Seer to his hand. Zack takes it, Naga triggers, creating a copy of itself. In his second main phase, he plays a Shizo, Death Storehouse. He ends the turn. During his draw step, Paul takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Mana Confluence. He casts his foretold card, Mystic Reflection, targeting Esper Sentinel. Ishai and Esper trigger. Zack draws and Ishai gets a counter. He activates Tevish's first ability to create two Thralls, but they become copies of Esper Sentinel instead through Mystic Reflection. Next, he taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Wheel of Fortune. In response, Zack casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. Both of Paul's Sentinels trigger and Ishai triggers as well. Paul draws twice and then Ishai gets a counter. Zack mills through Brain Freeze, including an Underworld Breach, and then Wheel of Fortune resolves. Each player discards their hand, including Zack, who discards Savine's Reclamation, and then draws seven. All finished up, Paul passes. Zack draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. Zack ends his turn. Dan draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mox Opal. All three Espers trigger. Dan taps his Ancient Tomb to pay for one of Paul's, and then Paul and Zack draw a card. He casts a Felwar Stone. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Paul. He adds eight red and then exiles Bergy God of Storytelling, Time Twister, and Silence. He casts Azorius Signet. He casts Bergy God of Storytelling. He casts Silence, and then everyone braces for impact. Bergy triggers, and in response, Nate casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, Pain of Life, and exiling a blue card, targeting Silence. All three Espers trigger. Zack and Paul draw, and then Silence is countered, and then Dan follows it up with a Time Twister. Bergy triggers, and in response again, Paul casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Time Twister. Ishai and Esper trigger, and then Zack draws, and then Ishai gets a counter. Fierce counters Twister, and then Dan adds a red through Bergy. He casts his other commander, Jeska, Thrice Reborn. Bergy triggers, and he adds a red. He activates Jeska's second ability, where X equals 2, targeting both Miss Syndicate Nagas and Zack's Esper Sentinel, killing them. He recasts his commander, Jeska, Thrice Reborn. He adds a red through Bergy, and it enters with three counters. He activates Jeska's first ability, targeting Ishai. In response, Paul casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Jeska's ability. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. In response, Zack cuts a deal with Dan, saying that he will counter Deflecting Swat if he doesn't hit him with the very large Ishai. Dan agrees, and Zack taps his Mana Confluence to help cast this spell, countering Deflecting Swat. Ishai and both Esper's trigger, and Zack pays for one, then Paul draws, and then Ishai gets a counter. Then Jeska's ability resolves. He moves to combat and swings Ishai at Paul. 
Paul takes triple damage because of Jessica and dies to commander damage. All finished up, Dan passes. During his upkeep, Nate loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a swamp. He casts scroll rack. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. He casts Graft Digger's Cage and Ishai gets another counter. In response to Graft Digger's Cage, Zach casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, Pain of Life, and exiling a blue card, targeting Graft Digger's Cage. Ishai and Dragon's Rage Channeler trigger. In response, Nate casts Mystical Tutor and Ishai gets a counter again. Then, Nate fetches up a Force of Negation onto the top of his library. Finally, Zach surveils Gamble into his graveyard through Channeler. Ishai's ability resolves and then gets a counter. Force of Will resolves, countering Graft Digger's Cage. Next, Nate activates Scroll Rack for two. He exiles two cards from his hand and then puts the top two cards from his library into his hand. He then puts the exiled cards on top. With his hand all set up, he ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He boosts the combat and attacks Jessica with Dragon's Rage Channeler. Jessica takes it and dies. In his second main phase, he casts a Brainstorm. Ishai and Channeler trigger. Zack surveils a Morphic Pool into his graveyard and Ishai gets a counter. Then Brainstorm resolves and Zack draws three and puts two cards back on top. He cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Dragon's Rage Channeler as an additional cost. He fetches up a card into his hand and then casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Ishai. Ishai gets a counter and then is exiled. Dan gains, like, a lot of life, and then Zack ends his turn. Dan draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain into play tapped. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Bergy. Zack takes it, and in his second main phase, Dan taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast his commander, Ishai, Ujitai Dragon Speaker. He passes. During his upkeep, Nate loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Ornithopter. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. He casts Nashi, Moon Sage's Scion, and Ishai gets another counter. He activates Scroll Rack for one, exiling, drawing, and rearranging. He ends the turn. Zack draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He taps his mana confluence to help flash back Savine's Reclamation targeting Underworld Breach and the copy targeting Dragon's Rage Channeler. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. Then Savine's Reclamation resolves, returning Underworld Breach and Dragon's Rage Channeler to the battlefield. He cracks Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding his hand and adding 3 blue. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond and Ishai gets a counter. He cracks it again, adding 3 black. He escapes Brain Freeze, with all copies targeting himself. Ishai and Dragon's Rage Channeler trigger. Zack surveils a Tarnished Citadel into his graveyard and Ishai gets a counter. Then Zack mills through Brain Freeze. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond again. Channeler and Ishai trigger. Zack surveils Flooded Strand into his graveyard and then Ishai gets a counter. He cracks his LED, adding 3 red. He escapes LED once more. Channeler and Ishai trigger. Zack surveils an island into his graveyard, and Ishai gets a counter. He cracks his LED, adding 3 white. He escapes Gamble. Channeler and Ishai trigger. Zack surveils a dark ritual into his graveyard, and Ishai gets a counter. Gamble resolves, and Zack fetches up a card into his empty hand, and then randomly discards a silence. The whole table laughs at Zack for casting a gamble with an empty hand. Doesn't he know how that card works? Zack escapes silence. Ishai and Channeler trigger. In response, Dan casts Dramatic Reversal, untapping all of his non-land permanents. Still in response, Dan casts March of Swirling Mist, targeting Channeler, Ornithopter, and Nashi. Then all three get phased out. Zack surveils a Necropotence into his graveyard, and then Ishai gets a counter. Then Silence resolves. Zack escapes a Brain Freeze, with all copies targeting himself. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. Brain Freeze resolves, and Zack mills nah, a lot of cards into his graveyard. He escapes Brain Freeze one more time, milling the rest of his library. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks it, adding 3 blue. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. It enters, triggers, and with an empty library, Zack wins the game. Ashani wins the Sprite and Banana Challenge and gets to start us off. But Sean has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Sacrifice. Ashani draws a card for turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts an Arcane Signet. Ashani passes. Nick draws a card for turn and casts a Lotus Petal. He casts an Ornithopter. He plays an Underground Sea for turn. He casts a Fourth Bridge Prowler. Nick passes. Sean draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Simic Signet. He pays two life to cast Jataxian Probe, targeting Noah. He looks at Noah's hand and draws a card. Finished up, Sean ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts a Birds of Paradise. Noah passes the turn. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Stomping Ground onto the battlefield tapped. During its upkeep, Ashani wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Steam Vents into play untapped, paying two life. He casts his commander, Paco, Arcane Retriever. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Paco. Paco triggers, Ashani reveals a Forest, Nick reveals a Phyrexian Walker, Sean reveals a Force of Will, and Noah reveals a Phantasmal Image. Then Paco gets two plus one plus one counters. Then Sean takes it, and Ashani ships the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Sunken Ruins. 
He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with 4th Bridge Prowler and Ornithopter. Ashani declares no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow, bouncing Ornithopter back to his hand. Then Ashani takes the hit, Yuriko triggers, and Nick reveals an underground river into his hand. In his second main phase, he recasts Ornithopter. Nick gives the turn to Sean. Sean draws and plays an island. He casts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to his second main phase and adds one black through his carpet. He delves away some of his graveyard and taps his ancient tomb to help cast his commander, Tassiger the Golden Fang. Sean ends his turn. Noah draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a volcanic island onto the battlefield. He casts a Dragon's Rage Channeler. He casts an Arcane Signet. Channeler triggers and Noah surveils, leaving it on top. Noah passes. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts his other commander, Halden, Avid Arcanist. He plays a Forest from Exile as his land for turn through Halden. He moves to combat and attacks Sean with Paco. Paco triggers and exiles Tropical Island, Cover of Darkness, Imperial Seal, and Arid Mesa. Then Paco gets 4 counters. Before damage, Sean casts March of Swirling Mist where X equals 1, phasing out Paco. In his second main phase, Ashani casts Birds of Paradise. Ashani ends his turn. Nick draws and plays an underground river. He moves to combat and attacks Noah with Yuriko and 4th Bridge Prowler and attacks Sean with Ornithopter. They declare no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsus in Thousand Faced Shadow, bouncing Ornithopter to his hand. Thousand Faced Shadow triggers and creates a copy of 4th Bridge Prowler tapped in attacking Noah. 4th Bridge Prowler triggers and gives Birds of Paradise minus one minus one, killing it. Then they all take it and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a Soul Ring into his hand with each opponent losing one and reveals a Mist Syndicate Naga into his hand with each opponent losing three. In his second main phase, Nick recasts Ornithopter. Finished up, Nick passes. Sean draws, and in his first main phase, he adds one black through his carpet. He plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He activates Tassiger, milling Exotic Orchard and Demonic Consultation, with Nick returning March of Swirling Mist to his hand. Sean passes the turn. At the end of Sean's turn, Noah casts Enlightened Tutor. Channeler triggers, and Noah surveils a Winds of Rebuke into his graveyard. He then fetches up a Rhystic Study onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Noah. Noah draws and casts Rhystic Study. Channeler triggers and Noah surveils Chrome Mox into his graveyard. Noah passes. Paco phases in and Ashani untaps. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays an Arid Mesa from Exile through Halden. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He casts Imperial Seal from Exile. Rhystic triggers and Noah draws. Then Ashani fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. He moves to combat and attacks Nick with Paco. Paco triggers, exiling Capture of Jingxiao, Silver Fur Master, Watery Grave, and a Worldly Tutor. Then Paco gets three counters. Then Nick takes it, and in its second main phase, Ashani casts Capture of Jingxiao from Exile. Rhystic triggers, and Noah draws. In response, Sean taps his Ancient Tomb to help activate Tasker. He mills Jeweled Lotus and Chrome Mox, and then Noah gives him Jeweled Lotus. Still in response, Noah casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Capture. Channeler triggers, and Noah surveils Wheel of Fortune into his graveyard. In response, Ashani casts Force of Will from Exile through Halden, paying a life, and exiling a blue card, targeting Red Blast, paying the Rhystic Tax. In response, Nick casts Misdirection for its alternate cost, exiling a blue card, targeting Force of Will. Rhystic triggers, and Noah draws. With no other answers, Misdirection resolves, changing the target of Force of Will to Capture of Jing Xiao. Then Force counters Capture, and Red Blast fizzles. With nothing else, Ashani ends his turn. Nick draws and casts Imperial Seal, paying the Rhystic Tax. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses 2 life. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Thousand Face Shadow. Ashani takes it, Yuriko triggers, and Nick reveals a deadly relic into his hand with each opponent losing 4. In his second main phase, Nick casts a Soul Ring. Rhystic triggers and Noah draws. Nick passes to Sean. Sean draws and in his first main phase he has 1 black through his carpet. He activates Tassiger, melding Gilded Drake and Rhystic Study. Then Nick gives him Chrome Mox. He plays Beseju, who endures as his land for turn. Sean gives the turn to Noah. Noah draws and casts Brainstorm. Channeler triggers and Noah surveils, leaving it on top. He then draws 3 and puts 2 back on top. He plays a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts a Mana Crypt. Channeler triggers and he surveils, leaving it on top again. He moves to combat and attacks Nick with Channeler since it now has Delirium. Nick takes it and Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Nick casts Deadly Relic for its alternate cost, targeting Paco, paying the Rhystic Tax. Paco is exiled and the turn moves to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and starts off his turn by casting Anger of the Gods. Rhystic triggers and Noah draws. Anger resolves, killing and exiling most of the board. Next, Ashani casts a Felwar Stone and Noah draws from Rhystic. He plays a Tropical Island from Exile as his land for turn through Halden. Ashani gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws and starts off his turn by hard casting his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. Rhystic triggers and Noah draws. Nick passes. At the end of Nick's turn, Sean taps his Ancient Tomb to help activate Tassiger, milling Neoform and Teferi Master of Time. Nick then gives him Demonic Consultation. 
The turn moves to Sean. Sean draws and in his first main face he adds two black through his carpet. He casts Wishclaw Talisman, paying the Rhystic Tax. Sean taps his Ancient Tomb and filters it into Simic Signet to help cast Stasis Oracle, paying the Rhystic Tax. Everyone jumps to attention and in response, Noah casts Intuition. He fetches up an Underworld Breach, Savine's Reclamation, and a Force of Will. Ashani is forced to give him Force of Will due to the Oracle on the stack. Then, with no other answers, Thassa's Oracle resolves. Oracle triggers and, in response, Sean activates Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Nick. Sean casts a Mana Consultation. Ristic triggers and Noah draws. In response, Noah casts Force of Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, countering Consultation. Then Oracle's trigger resolves and Sean looks at the top two, putting one on top and the rest on bottom. Next, Sean casts Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Tassiger as an additional cost. Ristic triggers and Noah draws. He fetches up a Nezahal, Primal Tide, onto the battlefield. He casts Chrome Mox and Noah draws through Ristic. Chrome Mox resolves and Sean imprints March of Swirling Mist. Sean ends his turn. At the end of Sean's turn, Noah casts Resculpt, targeting Nezahal. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws. In response, Sean casts Stubborn Denial with Ferocious. Ristic triggers and Noah draws. Resculpt is countered and the turn moves to Noah. During his upkeep, Noah wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts his commander, Omnath, Locus of Creation. It enters and Noah draws. He plays a Windswept Heath for turn. Omnath triggers and Noah gains 4 life. He cracks his Windswept Heath, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. Omnath triggers and Noah adds 4 mana. He casts Finale of Devastation where X equals 2. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws. In response, Nick casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost targeting Finale. Nezahal and Ristic trigger and Sean and Noah draw. In response, Noah casts Miscast, targeting Fierce. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws again. In response, Ashani casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Miscast, paying the Rhystic Tax. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws. With nothing else, Swat resolves, redirecting Miscast to Finale of Devastation. Then Miscast counters Finale and Fierce Guardianship fizzles. With nothing else, Noah passes. At the end of Noah's turn, Ashani casts Worldly Tutor from Exile through Halden. Nezahal and Rhystic trigger and Sean and Noah draw. Then Ashani fetches up a Consecrated Sphinx onto the top of his library. The turn moves to Ashani. During his upkeep, Ashani wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Dockside Extortionist, paying the Rhystic Tax. It enters and Ashani creates 9 treasures. He casts Consecrated Sphinx, paying the Rhystic Tax again. He plays a Watery Grave from Exile through Halden into play Untapped, paying 2 life. He recasts its commander, Paco, Arcane Retriever. Rhystic triggers and Noah declines to draw due to Consecrated Sphinx. Ashani moves to combat and attacks Noah with Paco. Paco triggers, exiling Tarnished Citadel, Blink Moth Infusion, Abrupt Decay, and Eladomri's Call. Then Paco gets four counters. Then Noah takes it, and Ashani ships the turn to Nick. Nick draws, Consecrated Sphinx triggers, and Ashani draws too. In his main phase, Nick activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Sean. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Yuriko. Ashani declares no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsu in Sakashima's student, bouncing Yuriko to his hand. Sakashima's student enters as a copy of Dockside. Dockside triggers and Nick creates 10 treasures. Still in combat, and since Dockside is unblocked, Nick ninjutsu in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Sakashima Student back to his hand. Nick presents a loop of bouncing each one back to his hand, having Student enter as a copy of Dockside, creating more and more treasures each time. He does this until he has a massive amount of treasures and stops the loop with Yuriko attacking Ashani. Ashani takes it, Yuriko triggers, and Nick reveals a City of Brass into his hand. In his second main phase, Nick casts Draco. He casts Prosperous Thief. He casts Sakashima Student. It enters as a copy of Draco. He plays a City of Brass for turn. Unfortunately, he does not have the outlet he needs to win with his treasures and passes the turn to Sean. Sean draws, Sphinx triggers, and Ashani draws too. In his first main phase, Sean adds three blue through his carpet. He plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He casts Jeweled Lotus. He cracks his Lotus and delves away some of his graveyard to help recast his commander, Tassiger of the Golden Fang. He channels Takanuma, Abandoned Mire, Milling Four, and returning Gilded Drake to his hand. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help activate Wishclaw, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Ashani. He casts Seedborn Muse. Ristic triggers and Ashani reasons with Noah to not ignore the trigger so that they can each draw into interaction through Consecrated Sphinx. Noah agrees, Ristic resolves, but Sean pays. Then Seedborn resolves. Next, Sean casts Gilded Drake, paying the Ristic Tax. Gilded Drake enters and targets Consecrated Sphinx. In response, Ashani casts Abrupt Decay from Exile through Halden, targeting Gilded Drake. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws. Sphinx triggers and Ashani draws too. Ristic triggers and Noah declines to draw. Then Gilded Drake is destroyed and the ability fizzles. With nothing else, Sean gives the turn to Noah. Sean untaps with Noah through Seedborn. During his upkeep, Noah loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws, Sphinx triggers, and Ashani draws too. In his main phase, Noah casts Imperial Recruiter. It enters and Noah fetches up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. 
he plays a flooded strand per turn. Omnath triggers and Noah gains 4 life. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. Omnath triggers and Noah adds 4 mana. He casts Dockside Extortionist. In response, Sean activates Tassiger, milling crop rotation and Yawgmoth's will. Nick gives him Force of Will. Then Sean taps his Ancient Tomb to hard cast Force of Will, paying the Ristic Tax, countering Dockside. Next, Noah flashes back Savine's Reclamation targeting Underworld Breach. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws. Sphinx triggers and Ashani draws too. In response, Sean exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts Dramatic Reversal. In response, Noah casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Reversal. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws. Sphinx triggers and Ashani draws too. Then Flusterstorm counters Reversal and Savine's resolves. Noah returns Underworld Breach to the battlefield and he copies Savine's Reclamation. It resolves and Noah returns Dockside Extortionist to the battlefield. Dockside enters and, in response, Nick sacrifices all of his treasures floating mana. Then Noah creates 11 treasures. Noah escapes Swords to Plowshares targeting Nezahal. Nezahal triggers and Sean draws. Sphinx triggers and Ashani draws too. In response, Sean activates Nezahal, discarding 3 cards, exiling Nezahal until the end of turn. Then Swords fizzles. Next, Noah escapes Swords to Plowshares again targeting Consecrated Sphinx. Sphinx is exiled and Ashani gains 4 life. Noah escapes Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Lion's Eye Diamond onto the top of his library. He escapes Wheel of Fortune. In response, Ashani casts Mindbreak Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Wheel of Fortune. In response, Noah escapes Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Trap. Flusterstorm counters Trap and Wheel resolves. Each player discards their hand and draws 7. Noah casts LED. In response, Nick uses some of his floating mana to cast Consign, targeting Underworld Breach. In response, Noah escapes Red Elemental Blast, countering Consign. Noah attempts to move to combat to force Nick to fizzle his mana. In response, Nick hard casts Dismember, killing Omnath. Then Noah moves to his second main phase. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Command Tower. He cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds 3 red. He escapes LED, then cracks it, adding 3 blue. He escapes Spellseeker. It enters, and Noah fetches up a Brain Freeze into his hand. He casts Brain Freeze, milling his entire library. He escapes LED, cracks it, and adds 3 blue. He escapes Brain Freeze 3 more times, milling out his opponents. Noah passes the turn, sacrificing Underworld Breach. One by one, each player attempts to draw from an empty library, loses, and Noah wins the game. Cal had the best outfit at the Ugly Ball and gets to start us off. Cal draws and plays a snow-covered forest. He casts a Birds of Paradise. He passes. James draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts a Basalt Monolith. This is a problem for the table, and James passes to Philip. Philip draws and plays a mountain. He casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. Philip ends his turn. Mike draws and starts off his turn by paying two life to cycle Street Wraith, drawing a card. He plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Universal Automaton. He casts Moon Circuit Hacker. Mike sends it over to Cal. Cal draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast his commander, Marwin the Nurturer. He casts Allosaurus Shepherd. Marwin triggers and gets a counter. Cal passes. During his draw step, James takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts its commander, Kennen, Bonder Prodigy. One by one, the table passes priority, and Kennen resolves. James taps Basalt Monolith, adding 4 mana through Kennen. He activates Basalt for 3, untapping it. With this loop, he generates infinite mana. He casts Mirage Mirror. He activates Mirage Mirror, targeting Basalt Monolith. He holds priority and activates Mirage Mirror, targeting Tropical Island. He continues to hold priority and adds these abilities to the stack hundreds of thousands of times. As he lets each of these resolves, he untaps it as Basalt Monolith and then taps it for mana as Tropical Island. With this, he generates infinite colored mana. Now that he has infinite colorless and colored mana, James begins to activate Kennen. He does this until he puts Prophet of Distortion onto the battlefield. He then uses his mana to draw out his deck. He casts Walking Ballista where X is… like a lot. And then he activates Walking Ballista, machine gunning the table, and James wins the game. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a City of Brass. He casts a Mana Crypt. He taps the City of Brass to help cast Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Phyrexian Walker. He casts a Graft Digger's Cage. Mike passes. Cal draws a card for turn and plays a Snow Covered Forest. He casts a Finehorn Elves. He passes. James draws and plays a Tide Channel Pathway. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Mana Vault. James ends his turn. Philip draws and starts off his turn by casting Mana Crypt. He plays a Mountain for turn. He casts Impulsive Pilferer. Philip gives the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks James with Phyrexian Walker. 
James declares no blocks and, in response, Mike taps the City of Brass to Ninjitsu in as commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Then James takes it and Yuriko triggers. Mike reveals a miscast into his hand with each opponent losing one. In his second main phase, Mike recasts Phyrexian Walker. Mike ships the turn to Cal. Cal draws and plays a snow-covered forest. He casts his commander, Marwin the Nurturer. Cal passes. James draws and casts a Mara Leaf Pixie. He passes. During his upkeep, Philip loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass, into play untapped, paying three life. He casts his commander, Atsushi the Blazing Sky. Philip sends it over to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks James with Phyrexian Walker and Yuriko. James blocks Yuriko with Mara Leaf Pixie. Before damage, Mike taps his City of Brass to Ninjitsu in Nashi, Moon Sage's Scion, bouncing Phyrexian Walker back to his hand. Then James takes it, and Yuriko and Nashi trigger. Mike reveals a Fairy Seer, Cal reveals a Survival of the Fittest, James reveals an Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, and Philip reveals a Desperate Ritual. Then Yuriko's trigger resolves, and Mike reveals a Moon Circuit Hacker into his hand, with each opponent losing two. In his second main phase, Mike pays two life to cast Survival of the Fittest from Exile through Nashi. He recasts Phyrexian Walker. Finished up, Mike passes. Cal draws and casts Quirion Ranger. Marwin triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. He casts Arbor Elf. Marwin triggers and gets another counter. He taps Marwin to cast Fierce Empath and Marwin gets a counter. Empath enters and Cal fetches up a Great Oak Guardian into his hand. He plays a Snow-Covered Forest for turn. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a forest to his hand and untapping Marwin. He taps Marwin to help cast Great Oak Guardian. It enters and gives all Cal's creatures plus two plus two until the end of turn, untapping them. He taps Marwin to cast Garuk, Primal Hunter. He activates Garuk's second ability, drawing six cards. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Snow-Covered Forest. He casts Elvish Pioneer. It enters, Marwin gets a counter, then Cal puts a Snow-Covered Forest into play tapped. But nothing else, Cal passes. James draws and casts his commander, Kennen, Bonder Prodigy. He passes. During his upkeep, Philip loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Command Beacon. He casts Mirage Mirror. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Itsushi. Mike takes it, and Philip ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks James with everything. James double blocks Yuriko with Kennen and Maraleaf Pixie. Before damage, Mike ninjutsu's in Prosperous Thief, bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Then James takes it, Yuriko dies, and two Yuriko, Anashi, and Prosperous Thief all trigger. Mike creates a treasure through Prosperous Thief. Then players reveal Personal Tutor, Kogla the Titan Ape, Mox Opal, and Arkham's Astrolabe. Then Mike reveals an island into his hand, and then reveals a Brainstorm into his hand with each player losing one life. In his second main phase, Mike pays six life to cast Kogla the Titan Ape through Nashi. It enters and targets Marwin. In response, Cal casts Might of Old Croja, targeting Marwin. This would unfortunately kill Kogla, so in response, Mike taps his City of Brass to activate Kogla, bouncing Prosperous Thief, giving Kogla indestructible until the end of turn. Then Might resolves, giving Marwin plus two plus two until the end of turn. Then they both fight, and Marwin dies. Mike plays an island for turn. He recasts Phyrexian Walker. Mike ships it over to Cal. Cal draws and casts Teamer Sabertooth. In response, James casts Mana Drain, countering Sabertooth. Cal passes. James draws, and in his first main phase, he has four colorless through Mana Drain. He casts Thrasios, Triton Hero. In response, Philip casts Red Elemental Blast, countering Thrasios. Next, James casts Counterbalance. Philip reconsiders whether or not Red Blast had the best target, and James passes to Philip. During his upkeep, Philip loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mike with Atsushi. Mike takes it, and in his second main phase, Philip casts Phyrexian Altar. Counterbalance triggers, and James reveals a Force of Will. Then Altar resolves. Philip casts Ruby Medallion. Philip passes. At the end of Philip's turn, Mike casts Brainstorm, drawing three and putting two back on top. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks James with Phyrexian Walker, Nashi, and Kogla. Kogla triggers and destroys James' counterbalance. Then James takes it and Nashi triggers. Mike reveals, Enter the Infinite. Cal reveals Snow-Covered Forest. James reveals Force of Will, and Philip reveals a Wheel of Fortune. In his second main phase, Mike pays 12 life to cast Enter the Infinite through Nashi. In response, Philip sacrifices Atsushi to Phyrexian Alder, adding a red, trying to find an answer. Atsushi triggers, and Philip exiles Skirt Prospector and Sunbird's Invocation. With no other answers, Enter the Infinite resolves. Mike draws all of the cards in his library and puts one back on top. He plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts a Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, and since Mike's devotion is greater than the cards in his library, Mike wins the game. Nick wins the Jello Pool Diving Competition and gets to start us off. Nick draws a card for turn and plays a Dark Slick Shores. He casts Phyrexian Walker. He casts a Mox Amber. He casts a Moth Dust Changeling. He ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and pays two life to cast Jetaxian Probe, targeting a Shawnee. He looks at a Shawnee's hand and draws a card. He casts a Chromox, imprinting Mental Misstep. He casts Mystic Remora. He ends his turn. Cruz draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He gives the turn to a Shawnee. 
Ashani draws and plays a Tundra. He casts a Mana Crypt and Ryan draws the Rumora. In response, Cruz cracks the Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. Mana Crypt resolves and Ashani follows up by casting a Rhystic Study. Ryan draws through Remora, and in response, Ryan casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, paying a life and exiling Thassa's Oracle and targeting Rhystic Study. In response, Ashani casts Misdirection for its alternate cost, exiling Transmute Artifact, targeting Force of Will. Remora triggers and Ryan draws. In response, Cruz casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Misdirection. Flusterstorm counters Misdirection and Force of Will counters Rhystic Study. Next, Ashani casts a Lotus Petal and Ryan draws through Remora. Ashani passes. Nick draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Phyrexian Walker and Mop Dust Changeling. Ryan declares no blocks and, in response, Nick ninjutsus in his commander, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Ryan takes the hit and Yuriko triggers twice. Nick reveals a command tower and then reveals an island and the table breathes a sigh of relief. In his second main phase, Nick recasts Phyrexian Walker. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Ryan pays to keep his Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim. He ships the turn to Cruz. Cruz draws and plays a City of Brass. He taps it to help cast the Sylvan Library, and Ryan draws through Remora. Cruz passes. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts a Dranith Magistrate. He gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts Fairy Seer. It enters and Nick scries too. He activates Moth Dust Changeling, tapping Fairy Seer to give it flying until the end of turn. He moves to combat and attacks Cruz with Yuriko and Phyrexian Walker and Ashani with Moth Dust. Cruz declares no blocks and, in response, Nick Nijutsu's in Misblade Shinobi, bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Cruz takes the hit and Yuriko triggers three times. Nick reveals a Sakashima student with each opponent losing four, a Flusterstorm with each opponent losing one, and a Marsh Flats. At the end of combat, Nick Ninjutsu Zen Sakashima Student bouncing Miss Blade Shinobi to his hand. It enters as a copy of Dreneth Magistrate. In his second main phase, he casts Phyrexian Walker. Nick ships the turn to Ryan. At the end of Nick's turn, Ryan pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, putting Scalding Tarn from his graveyard onto the top of his library. During Ryan's upkeep, he pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an underground sea onto the battlefield. He casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts Smothering Tithe. Ryan ends his turn. During Cruz's draw step, Sylvan Library and Smothering Tithe trigger. Ryan creates a treasure, and then Cruz draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. Tithe triggers, and Ryan creates two more treasures. In his main phase, Cruz plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts a Rhystic Study, and Ryan draws through Remora. Cruz passes. During his upkeep, Ashani wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws, Tithe triggers, and Ryan creates a treasure. In his main phase, Ashani plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Hallowed Fountain onto the battlefield tapped. He gives the turn to Nick. Nick draws, Tithe triggers, and Ryan creates a treasure. In his main phase, Nick plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Ashani with Fairy Seer, Cruz with Yuriko, Dranith Magistrate, and Moth Dust, and Ryan with Phyrexian Walker. Everyone declares no blocks, and in response, Nick ninjutsus in Miss Blade Shinobi, bouncing Phyrexian Walker to his hand. Nick's opponents take the hit, and Yuriko triggers four times, and Miss Blade Shinobi triggers. Miss Blade Shinobi bounces Avacyn's Pilgrim, and Yuriko's trigger resolves. Nick reveals a Vampire Tutor with each opponent losing one, reveals a Mana Crypt, and reveals a Tainted Isle. With the last Yuriko trigger still in the stack, Nick casts Vampiric Tutor, Rhystic and Mystic trigger, and Ryan and Cruz draw. Smothering Tide triggers, and Ryan creates a treasure. Tutor resolves, and Nick fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then the last trigger resolves, and Nick reveals a Common Deer with each opponent losing seven. In his second main phase, he casts a Mana Crypt. Rhystic and Remora trigger, Cruz draws, Ryan creates a treasure through Tithe, and then Ryan draws. Nick casts Phyrexian Walker. Rhystic triggers and Cruz draws, and Ryan makes a treasure through Tithe again. Nick ends his turn. At the end of Nick's turn, Ryan casts Worldly Tutor, paying the Rhystic tax. In response, Nick casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Worldly Tutor. Rhystic and Mystic trigger, Ryan draws, and Nick pays for Remora. Worldly Tutor is countered, and the turn moves to Ryan. During Ryan's upkeep, he pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Avacyn's Pilgrim, paying the Rhystic tax. Ryan passes, discarding to hand size. At the end of Ryan's turn, he reminds everyone to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to be notified of when we publish more. During Cruz's draw step, Sylvan Library and Smothering Tide trigger. Ryan creates a treasure, then Cruz draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying four life to keep one extra. Tide triggers, and Ryan creates two more treasures. In his main phase, Cruz casts Chrome Mox, and Ryan draws through Remora. It enters, and Cruz imprints Compost. He plays a Mana Confluence. Wanting to add more triggers to the stack, he casts his own Mystic Remora. Remora triggers and Ryan draws. Cruz gives the turn to Ashani. At the end of Cruz's turn, Ashani channels Ottawara at Soaring City, bouncing Dranith Magistrate back to Nick's hand. During his upkeep, Ashani loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and Ryan creates a treasure. He plays a Spire of Industry for turn. He casts his commander, Tivit, Seller of Secrets. Cruz draws for Mystic and Ryan creates a treasure. Tivit enters and Ashani creates two treasures and three clues. Ashani passes. 
During his upkeep, Nick loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws and Ryan creates a treasure. Nick moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Fairy Seer and crews with Yuriko, Mothdust Changeling, and Miss Blade Shinobi. In response, Ryan casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Cruises Remora and Study Trigger, and in response, Nick casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost targeting Cyclonic Rift. Remora, Remora, and Rhystic Trigger, Cruz draws two, Tithe triggers, Ryan creates two treasures, then Ryan draws through Remora. In response, Ryan casts Swan Song, targeting Fierce Guardianship. Cruises Remora and Rhystic Trigger, and in response, Nick casts Commandeer for its alternate cost, exiling two blue cards, targeting Cyclonic Rift. Remora, Rhystic, and Remora Trigger, Nick pays for Remora, Cruz draws through Remora, Ryan creates another treasure, then Nick pays for Rhystic. In response, Ryan casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Commandeer. Cruz draws through Remora and Rhystic, and Ryan creates two treasures through Tithe. With no other answers, <sighs> Flusterstorm resolves, Commandeer is countered, Cruz draws two off of Remora and Rhystic, Ryan creates two treasures, Swan Song counters Fierce Guardian Chip, Nick creates a 2-2 bird, then Cruz draws from his other Remora and Rhystic trigger, Ryan creates two more treasures, and still in response to Cyclonic Rift, <sighs> Ashani sacrifices a clue, draws a card, and Ryan creates a treasure, then Ashani sacrifices another clue, draws a card, and Ryan creates another treasure, then Cruz floats a green mana, and after a very long journey, Cyclonic Rift finally resolves, and each opponent's non-land permanents are bounced. Nick attempts to move to his second main phase, and in response, Cruz casts Worldly Tutor. Ryan draws through Remora, then Cruz fetches up an Endurance onto the top of his library. Next, Nick casts Phyrexian Walker. He casts a Mana Crypt, and Ryan draws through Remora. He plays a Tainted Isle as his land for turn. He casts Fairy Seer. It enters, and he scries too. Nick chips the turn to Ryan. At the end of Nick's turn, Ryan cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield tapped. During Ryan's upkeep, Remora triggers, and in response, he casts Silence. In response, Cruz casts Veil of Summer, and Ryan draws through Remora. Veil of Summer resolves, and in response, Ashani pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, targeting Silence. Ryan draws through Remora, and Silence is countered. Then Ryan lets his Remora die, and he draws for turn. In his main phase, he casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Wishclaw Talisman. In response, Cruz casts Mindbreak Trap for its ultimate cost, targeting and exiling Wishclaw Talisman. Ryan casts Tainted Pact. He exiles from the top of his library until he exiles Azerek the Archlich, putting it into his hand. He casts his Commander, Atraxa, Grand Unifier. It enters, Ryan reveals the top 10 cards of his library, choosing Mnemonic Betrayal, Pact of Negation, Dress Down, Grand Abolisher, and Ottawa Soaring City into his hand. He casts Displacer Kitten. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Mana Crypt. Displacer Kitten triggers, and Ryan targets Atraxa. In response, Nick channels Ottawara Soin City, targeting Atraxa. In response, Ryan casts Pact of Negation, targeting his own Chain of Vapor, in order to get a Kitten trigger. Displacer Kitten triggers, and Ryan targets Atraxa. Atraxa flickers, triggers, and Ryan reveals the top 10. He puts Demonic Tutor, Arcane Signet, Elvish Spirit Guide, and a Veil of Summer into his hand. With Ottawara's ability still in the stack, Ryan exiles Elvish Spirit Guide from his hand for green to cast Veil of Summer. Displacer Kitten triggers and blinks Atraxa. Atraxa enters, and Ryan reveals the top 10. He puts Windfall, Wild Growth, Soul Ring, Culling the Weak, Deathrite Shaman, and Command Tower into his hand. Then Veil of Summer resolves, and Ryan draws. With Ottawara still on the stack, Ryan casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Avacyn's Pilgrim as an additional cost. Kitten triggers, flickers Atraxa, and Atraxa triggers. Ryan reveals the top 10, putting Lotus Petal, Food Chain, Imperial Seal, Drenith Magistrate, and a Beseju who endures into his hand. Then Culling the Weak resolves, and Ryan adds 4 black. Then Pact of Negation resolves, but doesn't counter Chain of Vapor due to Veil of Summer. Then Nick's Ottawara channel resolves and bounces Atraxa back to Ryan's hand. Chain of Vapor then resolves, Ryan bounces Mana Crypt to his hand and doesn't continue the chain. He recasts Mana Crypt. Kitten triggers and blinks itself, then Mana Crypt resolves. He casts Food Chain. Kitten triggers, blinks Mana Crypt, and Food Chain resolves. He casts Lotus Petal. Kitten triggers, Ryan floats Mana, Mana Crypt flickers, and Lotus Petal resolves. He casts a Soul Ring. He flickers Mana Crypt, and Soul Ring resolves. He casts an Arcane Signet. Kitten triggers, flickers Mana Crypt, and Arcane Signet resolves. Ryan casts Deathrite Shaman. He exiles Deathrite to Food Chain, adding two blue. He casts Mist Hollow Griffin. He exiles it to Food Chain, adding 5 blue. He presents a loop of casting Miss Hollow from Exile, exiling it to Food Chain for 5 blue, and then repeating it until he has infinite blue creature mana. He repeats the loop with his extra blue mana until he has infinite black mana. He casts Acerek the Archlich. It enters, Ryan ventures into the Lost Mine of Fandelver, and Acerek returns to his hand. He recasts it over and over. Whenever he enters the Dark Pool Room, each opponent loses one, and Ryan gains one. And since Ryan never completes the Tomb of Annihilation, Ryan can bounce Acerek over and over until his opponents are dead, and Ryan wins the game.